Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today guys, we're gonna be doing a different video. I'm gonna do a video of how to, how to read the chart plotter, the chart plotter basics 101. And I'll tell you, I met this couple at uh, the marina and I, man, I felt so bad for them. I was talking to them. They had a horrible day. They, uh, uh, let's turn away from the sun. They, uh, they were out on the boat and they had just got the boat and they went out on the boat to have no idea what they're doing. They anchored by the way they were describing it to me inside of a sanctuary. And these are marked with yellow buoys that you can't anchor in it. And then because they had the wrong anchor and this is a very coral and hard bottom that's protected. You're not supposed to anchor there, by the way, they couldn't get their anchor up. They couldn't get their anchor up. It was very dangerous. They said they were very scared. As they kept trying to pull the anchor with the boat, the bow kept turning and pulling the bow down. And luckily for them, it was a really calm day. But if it was a rough day, that could be a very serious situation where you could take a wave over the bow of the boat and capsize the boat. And they had to cut the anchor. So they anchored in the sanctuary. They had to cut the anchor. And on the way back in, he hit bottom and he broke the skeg off of the motor. And this is all in one trip. And, you know, I tried to briefly explain to them what I do and I have a YouTube channel and we do a lot of instructional videos and I, I told them I'm going to put out a video for you guys uh, and I, you know, gave them the, the channel. I want you to watch it. I want you to learn from it because the reality is that you could come out on a boat to have a good day with your friends and family and you don't know what you're doing and it could turn into a nightmare. And the last thing you want is to have a catastrophic accident on the water get a fine for anchoring where you're not supposed to it's just a nightmare so i'm going to show you the basics of how to read your chart plotter and that you can understand all the symbols on the chart plotter so let's jump behind the helm and get right into it all right so when you power on your unit and select the chart option you're going to see your chart and you're going to have the boat icon right in the middle and the very first thing that i want to cover is the water depth so these are the numbers that are all over the chart and all of these numbers that you see on the chart represent the depth of water in that section in that area this is really important for you to know to ensure you don't run aground or you hit bottom while you're navigating now, a lot of people have this misconception that once they cross over to the ocean side and you're out here, it's the ocean side. It's deep water everywhere. You could go wherever you want. But the reality is that there's so many shallow spots out here that you can hit and run aground, spots that have a foot or less of water. Now, running aground or hitting bottom can be extremely dangerous, especially if you're navigating at a high rate of speed. And depending on what you hit, you could be heavily fined, you could face court cases and community service hours and incur a lot of money in repairs to the boat and repairs to rehabilitate whatever you hit on the ocean floor. So it's really important that you understand right from the get-go how much water your boat drafts. And the draft is the amount of space that your boat sits in the water or is below the water line. Then once you determine how much water your boat needs to be able to navigate safely, you can always ensure that relying on the depth numbers of the water on your chart that you never navigate through water that is less than what you need for your boat to navigate safely through. Now as a good rule of thumb, I would tell you guys, if you need two feet of water before you hit bottom, don't navigate through two and a half feet of water. Give yourself some more room. Navigate through water that's a little bit deeper, three, four feet as shallow, you know, I wouldn't go below that just to give yourself enough space just in case there's something, an obstruction on the bottom of the ocean floor that you don't hit it with your prop or the hull of the boat. Now, the next thing that I wanna cover with you are the symbols on your chart for rocks. Now, these symbols are gonna look like an asterisk and they should be avoided at all times. These symbols mean that they're dangerous rock areas that pose a threat to navigation. Now, some of these rock areas can even be exposed, so underwater at low tide, making it even more dangerous to navigate around. Hitting one of these rock areas, especially at a high rate of speed, is gonna cause extensive damage to your hull and to everybody on board is gonna get seriously injured. When you hit something at that speed, that hard, your boat is gonna stop immediately and send everybody that was on the boat airborne. 
and the impact from that is gonna break bones and could be catastrophic. I would honestly highly recommend that you avoid these areas and travel around them. Make sure you give yourself plenty of space to ensure that you never even come close to hitting them. Now the next symbol, this is very important, is this a symbol for what is called breakers. Now areas that you see that have this symbol on the chart could be extremely dangerous to navigate through because what's happening in this area is that the depth of water is very shallow and then you're getting the waves that are coming through and they're they're essentially they're they're breaking that's why it's called breaker so they're going to be rolling waves and when you're caught in this type of situation it becomes extremely hard for you to be able to keep control of the boat as the rolling or breaking waves are going to push your vessel all around and then depending on the amount of draft of your vessel and the amount of water that's available where those breakers are you could even hit bottom let's just say it was a very rough day every time that swell of the wave is going to come down you're now going in negative from the normal water height and that you're e even less water for your hull to hit the bottom every time that that swell goes down so stay away from those areas as well. Now the next area that I want you to familiarize yourself with, and it's very important that you stay away from this area as well, these are called shoals. Now a shoal is usually uh, it's, uh, it's an area where there's very little water. A lot of times it's created by currents uh, or tide changes that have created this like bank, if you will. But either way, those are very, very shallow areas that you could run aground and hit bottom on. Now you can identify these by the water depth numbers that we talked about on the chart. And sometimes in high traffic areas, these shoals can be marked with a sign that'll read shoal or they could even be marked with a sign that reads danger. And remember that sometimes if the, the weather's rough enough and the wave height is large enough, you could even see the waves breaking and rolling on the surface of the shoals as well. Now these could be very dangerous as well and I would highly recommend that you really familiarize yourself with the shoals that are in the area that you navigate. A really good rule of thumb would be to review your chart before you go out on the boat or where you're planning on going so you have a mental picture, an idea of where these shoals are so you could be better prepared to avoid them. And always, always, always check your charts, especially if you're navigating in unfamiliar areas. Now, no matter what brand, we have Garmin on our boat, but no matter what brand of chart plotters you have on your boat, whether Garmin, Simrad, Furuno, I think they all come with an application that you can download on your smartphone and you will be able to see the chart from your smartphone. And the good thing about that is you're gonna go out on the boat, you're not sure, you kinda wanna look at where you're gonna go Review it before the day before you go out, sit down, review the chart on your smartphone and get an idea of where you're going and what potential hazards could be along the way to where you're going and coming back. The next symbol that I really want you to familiarize yourself with and avoid when navigating are spoil areas. So a spoil area is basically a spot where dredged material has been deposited and dumped into the ocean uh, when they were doing any type of work. And the problem with these spoil areas is that the depth of water is unknown and can vary from what the chart says. So that's why they're marked and they say spoil area to really warn all mariners to steer clear of that section. And you'll see it like a square blocked off. It's really important for navigational safety to avoid these areas to prevent damaging your boat, hitting bottom, or even potentially running aground on top of the spoil area. And the next thing that I wanna talk about, they're called the depth contour lines. And these are the lines that you see on your chart. Now these lines can be very confusing for new boaters, but they really present an awesome picture of the topography of the ocean floor that you're navigating over. Basically what these lines are there and what they show you is for you to understand the different depth changes that are happening along the ocean floor. And then what will happen is every time that line changes, it could be less water or it could be more water. It could be a hill, it could be a hole. So in this example, the lines are representing a valley or a hole and you can identify that because the depth that you see is increasing. And then in this example, the depth contour lines represent a hill or a mountain, if you will, on the sea floor. And then by the same way, you can identify because you see that the depth is decreasing, which lets you know that those circles or lines are elevated from the sea.
Now, the next area that I really want you to familiarize yourself because they're in a lot of places along our coast here is areas that are marked as unexploded ordnance. Now, unexploded ordnance areas are areas where the military has deposited explosive weapons which have not been detonated and they remain hazardous. So when you identify these areas in your, within your area that you navigate through or you go fishing, it's very important that you avoid these areas and never, never, never drop your anchor in or near an area that's marked off as unexploded ordnance. Now the next symbol, this is important for you to familiarize yourself with, are the symbol for wrecks. Now there's a, gonna be a variety of wrecks in the ocean. Some of them are from actual accidental sinking and some of them are from intentional sinking where they've been sunk on purpose in that spot to create an artificial reef. Now depending on the depth of water that you're in and that wreck is in, some wrecks could pose a threat to navigation because there's not enough depth of water on top of that wreck for a vessel to go by. And another important thing to note with wrecks is that wrecks are very popular for dive sites. And so what that means is you're gonna have a lot of people that are gonna be diving on those wrecks, you're gonna have dive boats diving on those wrecks and you really wanna familiarize yourself on where they are because the last thing that you wanna do is be navigating close to a dive site where there's divers in the water that could turn very catastrophic if you were to hit somebody with your boat propeller. So when you know where these areas are and these wrecks and you can identify, you've got dive boats, they've got their dive flags out, you wanna steer clear of those areas and don't navigate through an area where people are diving and wrecks is a very, very hot spot for diving. Now, the next area that I wanna cover are areas that are marked as sanctuaries or an ecological reserve area. Either way, these areas are highly protected and you cannot anchor or fish within these areas. These areas are gonna be marked with yellow buoys. They're, they'll be yellow like metal buoys and they mark the perimeter of the area. So when you look at it on your chart, you're gonna see the little yellow can buoys like this. And imagine if you were to connect all of them together with a line and that square, the triangle, the rectangle, whatever shape they are when you connect all of those lines together, the space in between all of those yellow buoys is protected. You can't anchor there. That's a protected coral areas that if you anchor, you're gonna get extremely hefty fines and might even be arrested depending on the kind of damage that you do with it. All right, so now we're moving on to mooring buoys. And these are important for you to know because this is the only type of buoy that you can tie off to on the ocean. It is unlawful to tie off to any other buoy except mooring buoys. Now these buoys, they're, they're always gonna be painted white and they're gonna have a blue stripe along them with a rope that you could tie off to them. Now these buoys could be found in anchorage areas. They could be found out here where I'm at today. Uh, I'm actually tied off to one of them right here while I'm recording this video with you on the edge of the reef. So you could find them you know, all over the place. Just remember that they're gonna be white buoys. They're gonna have a blue stripe that goes through it and it's gonna have a rope for you to be able to tie off to it as well. Now, the next thing that your chart plotter is gonna show you, no matter where you're at, is what's called the aids to navigation. And the aids to navigation are devices or systems to help vessels navigate through the water and waterways that make sure that they're navigating safely. So aids to navigation is basically a system, uh, devices and systems that are put in place to ensure that vessels can navigate safely through waterways, channels, reefs, and these can include navigational buoys, lighthouses, beacons, day marks, and most commonly to boaters are channel markers. Now, when the channel markers, it's important to know when you see this little teardrop shape over a channel marker, this indicates that that channel marker has a light on it. So during non-daylight hours, you're gonna be able to see a light flashing from that channel marker. Now I know that that was a lot of information, especially if you're new to boating, you're new to reading the chart plotter. These are very basic, basic things. Stop the video, download the app for your chart plotter, watch the video, look at the symbols in your area so you familiarize yourself with what we're talking about. But all of these things are gonna ensure that you heighten your safety when you go out on a boat. When you go out on a boat, safety is the absolute number one priority. And I wanna ensure 
that you can have a safe boating experience. Now, if you want to learn more helpful Garmin Marine tips, check out our Garmin Marine Electronics playlist. I'll link it at the end of this video where we've got a bunch of videos to help you on your journey with your Garmin Marine Electronics. Thank you for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.